Here's an introduction to the Ravengrade Cinelook plugin for DaVinci Resolve. This plugin allows you to apply and mix your choice of looks from a library designed by a diverse group of well-known colorists, and it also offers a number of unique tools for creatively shaping your desired look. We're going to start by taking a look at the 709 version of the tool and then explore the ACES and RCM versions. So let's begin by going to our project settings and confirming that our color management is set to DaVinci YRGB, meaning no project level color management, because in this case, the color management is going to be handled by the plugin itself. So let's go up here to the upper right to our open effects tab, which may be labeled effects in some systems and look for DCTL and drop it onto an empty node. When we do, we will be given a drop down menu where we can scroll to find CineLook 709. And once we select it, we will see a display transform as well as a creative look imparted onto our image. Now, the creative look component of that transformation is being controlled by this main look drop down right here. So you can see right now we are on the Onyx look, but we could select from any look in this list based on what works best for our grade. In addition, we have the sub look drop down menu, which allows us to select a second look and mix in between these two, however we desire. So if we wanted to do that, all we have to do is enable that sub look and then begin to move our mix look slider over to the right. All the way here on the left, our mix look slider is going to mean that only the main look is showing through. All the way here to the right means that only the sub look is showing through. And of course, anywhere in between is going to represent a mixture of those two looks. Now, in addition to the ability to select a main look, a sub look and mix in between those looks, we have sliders for the intensity of our main look as well as our sub look. So we can globally scale back how intense each of these looks is in addition to the way that they interact. We also have our color space drop down here, which allows us to designate the color space of whatever image we are feeding into the plugin. So you'll see we have a number of popular camera formats supported here, as well as some popular working color spaces, which you can choose between based on your workflow. In our case, we are in the exact right place here with airy wide color gamut log C. And now that we understand these drop down menus here and the way that we can mix our looks together and scale their intensity, let's work through our sliders from top to bottom and get a better understanding of all of the controls here in the plugin. So if we start at the top here, we have our film exposure slider. This slider works photometrically and in units of stops. So right now I am pulling about one stop. And if I wanted to add one stop, I could move things over here to the right like so. So a simple photometric exposure that operates in stops. Next down, we have our gain, which is the same type of gain we would apply here in our resolve primaries, simply allows us to control our top end contrast in a nice broad way. And we have a companion lift slider, which allows us to broadly manipulate the bottom of the image. Next, the cool warm slider gives us a preferential color temperature adjustment that's been sweetened to prioritize skin tone, as you can see here. And then we have a companion tint slider, which moves the image on an axis 90 degrees to that of this cool warm slider and is essentially adjusting our green channel inside of a linear tone curve. And now we have our saturation high and vibrant sliders, which we're going to go to a fresh image to get a look at and play around with this saturation high slider to start. So what this slider is going to do is control how much saturation is being introduced into the upper luminance ranges of the image, like so. So you can see, as I move to the right, I'm getting more saturation in the brighter portions of my image. And as I go off to the left, I'm getting less saturation in those areas. Next, our vibrant slider gives us the opposite. We can control how much or how little saturation we are introducing into the bottom portion of our tone scale. And you'll notice that saturation high and vibrance have quite a bit of overlap between them. And that is by design because we want to have a nice gentle transition between the influence of one over the other and ensure that whatever image we are feeding in and whatever settings we select here with our sliders, we're never going to break anything and our adjustments are going to continue to feel nice and soft and organic. 
Finally, if we look at our saturation density slider here, this is going to control how dense, meaning how dark or bright, our colors are as we saturate them. And allowing me to give my higher saturations a more subtractive or filmic quality as I move from left to right. We've also got controls for per channel density, which simply lets us do the same type of thing on our individual red, green, or blue channel. And as you can see, no matter where I set these densities, the overall luminance of the image is preserved. Next, let's go back to our first image and take a look at our highlight trim slider. This highlight trim slider is going to allow you to pull in or stretch out just the peak highlights of your image while having very little influence over the rest of it, as you can see here. So it's a nice, precise way of targeting just the peak highlights of your image and contouring those per your creative intent. Now let's take a look at our highlight volume and our highlight volume ratio. These sliders allow you to decrease contrast in the highlights of your image and create a feeling of volume or thickness in that area. So as I increase my highlight volume, you can see that I am reducing the contrast in the upper end of my image. And if I look at the highlight volume ratio, this is going to determine how much of that contrast is coming from lift, which is here on the left, versus gain, which is here on the right. So the amount of lift versus the amount of gain that is being introduced by this highlight volume slider as I move to the left or to the right, like so. And now we can talk about our shadow settings. I'm gonna to go to a new frame and take a look at my shadow trim. You can see my black point is going to come up in a very targeted way. So I'm not having much influence over the rest of my image. I'm just targeting those very bottom shadows. And my shadow volume and shadow volume ratio are going to mirror the behavior we were just looking at with our highlight volume and ratio. So as I move this to the right, I'm gonna be changing around the contrast ratio of the bottom end of my image. And as I move my ratio itself to the left or to the right, I'm going to be controlling how much lift versus how much gain is being introduced with this volume slider, like so. So it's a mirror of the same settings that we were looking at with our highlight volume and ratio a moment ago. So we've now looked at all of the core functionality of all of the sliders and drop downs here in the CineLook 709 tool. And we're ready to take a look at the CineLook tool in its ACES and RCM flavors. Now, the only difference with these versions of the tool is that we are no longer going to be imparting a 709 display transform because the tool is going to leave your color management to your chosen color management framework and impart no output display transform of its own. So let's go ahead and select CineLook ACES from our drop down menu here. And we can now go to our project settings and we're gonna change our color management. Now we are gonna select ACES CCT for our color science because we're gonna be working in ACES. Select whatever version I prefer to work in and go ahead and set up my input device transform per my camera and my output device transform per my mastering display. And I can now hit save. And when I do, I'm gonna get back my normalized image and see that my CineLook tool is simply slotting into my overall ACES color management framework without itself applying an output display transform. It is only imparting a creative look. So other than this distinction, all of our sliders and all of our settings here inside of the ACES version of the plugin work exactly the same. The only menu that is different is our color space menu because since we're now working in ACES, our options here have changed. We are at our default right now of ACES CCT, the standard working color space for color grading inside of an ACES pipeline, but we could also select ACES CC, ACES CG, or ACES if we were in such a workflow. In our case, ACES CCT is perfect because that's what we set up in our project settings. And other than that, everything is going to behave exactly the same way as we just looked at with the 709 version of the CineLook plugin. Finally, let's take a look at the CineLook RCM version of the plugin. I'm gonna select that here. And once again, go to project settings, and I'm now going to select DaVinci YRGB Color Managed for my color science. And when I do, I'm gonna to wanna to turn my automatic color management off. And from here, I have two options. 
I can select HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, but in that case, I'll need to manually tag the proper input color space on my individual clips. The second option is to select Custom, in which case I can set my input color space here in the project settings, like so. And now I'll simply select DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate for my timeline color space and hit Save. And now, once again, I have the same core functionality of the CineLook plugin, but it is operating within a Resolve Color Management pipeline, as opposed to an ACES pipeline, or in the case of the 709 tool, actually providing color management all within a single plugin. So once again, all of my settings, all of my sliders are exactly the same and are going to behave exactly the same, with the only difference being that my working color space menu has changed. And since Resolve Color Management allows us a bit more flexibility in terms of our working color space of choice, you'll see that reflected here in our working color space menu, and we can designate whatever working color space we happen to have selected in our color management settings inside of our project settings. In our case, DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate is the proper place, and I've got things set up and ready to go inside of a Resolve Color Management pipeline. So that's a brief overview of the functionality of the CineLook tool in its 709, ACES, and RCM variations.